Hello everyone and welcome to FetchFind. This is Linda, your Director of Product here at FetchFind. And today I'm going to walk you through logging into your account, getting your employees set up, and everything you need in order to get started on this new platform and be successful in your staff training. So first thing you're going to do is go to fetchfindtraining.com. You'll enter your email address. And if this is your first time logging into the platform, you're going to click Forgot Your Password right here. That will send an email right to the email address that you put in, and you can set your password to whatever you'd like it to be. Once you're done with that, you'll come right back to fetchfindtraining.com, enter your password, and hit Sign In. When you log in, you'll be taken right to your dashboard where you can see your groups. Groups are a way to organize your staff members by their job title, what content they should have access to, or by location, or all of the above. The possibilities are endless, and this way you can send emails or assign content specifically to one group of staff without it affecting any other groups of staff. When you first log in, you'll see one group called Main, and this is the default setting and it can be fully customized. So you can see for my demo account, I've chosen to organize my staff by their job title. I've got my dog walkers, daycare attendants, and front desk staff. To edit a group, you'll click the info icon right next to the group and click edit. From here, you can change the name of the group and add or remove content. So I'm going to keep the daycare attendants title and Let's say I don't think it's important for them to know feline fundamentals and I don't want them spending their time on that. I can go ahead and hit remove right here, this little X, and it will remove it from the list of content that they have access to. You can always add it right back if you'd like to. And in order to save, you'll just scroll down and hit save. To add a new group, click the green add group button on the groups page. You'll be prompted to enter the name of your group, and you can organize your groups by, again, job duties, location, or any other category you'd like. Once you've added all the information you'd like to add, hit Save down at the bottom. In order to assign content, you'll go into the group, hit Info, edit, and go to the content field. To remove content, click the X next to the course. To add content, click the blank space in the content menu, and a drop-down menu will appear with any available courses that aren't already listed. Click a course to add it to the group, then scroll down and hit save. I do want to mention here that when you add someone to your group, they automatically have access to any content within that group. You can add people to groups when they are first onboarded or after the fact. So, so if someone moves from being a dog walker to a daycare attendant, you can easily put them into that new group or take them out of other groups. It's an easy way to organize staff and give them access to content. You can also put your staff members into multiple groups. So if you have someone who's a daycare attendant but also works the front desk on the weekends, you can put them in both of those groups. On this page, you also have access to a few advanced settings. If you'd like to create subgroups, you'll assign a parent group using the drop-down menu. You also have the option to give members of this group access to content for a specific number of days or to set their access to expire on a specific date. When you've completed all the edits you'd like to make, hit Save. You can change the way that you view groups. In the tree format here, you can click and drag to move the tree about the screen, as well as zoom in and zoom out. You can switch to a list view by clicking on the list icon in the upper right corner. And in this view, you can hover over the group name and either click to edit or select the trash can to delete. If you want to send an email to a group of learners, 
go to email on the left side. And this will bring you to a drop down menu where you can select the group or groups to receive the email. You can choose multiple groups, as many as you'd like. Once you've selected your groups, you can create the email subject line, include body text and formatting, insert images, and even add a call to action button with internal or external URLs. So let's say, for example, we're having a sale on packages of dog walks. I can enter any text that I'd like to enter. I can add a clickable button. And when you're finished creating your email, you can send a test email to yourself or send it to everyone in the group. Now let's talk about learners. Learner is the language that we use for your staff members. When you click on the Manage Learners tab, you can see everyone who's in your account across the entire organization. Under the Last Active column, you can see everyone who has logged in along with a date and timestamp of last activity. Learners who have never logged in will go to the top of the column and that section will be blank. You can add new learners individually or in bulk by clicking the appropriate button in the upper right to get started. To add a single learner, click on Add Learner and fill in all the appropriate information, including name, email address, and what groups you'd like to add them to. I'm going to add to the dog walkers group, as well as the front desk staff group. Once you've selected your groups, you can add an invitation message. If you leave this blank, it will send a generic email to your staff member. When you're done, click the green invite button and you'll see a confirmation that an invitation has been sent to your new walker. And now you can see that new learner has been added and will appear at the top of the list. To change information or reset a password, you'll again be under the Manage Learners tab. Hit Manage next to the learner you'd like to edit. And you'll have a few options for action on this page, including Edit and Resend Invitation. You can also see who sent the initial invitation to the learner. If you resend the invitation, a green confirmation box will pop up in the lower right corner. To change your learner's information, click on Edit, which will take you to the Details screen. Here you'll be able to edit or add information such as name, email address, bio, and picture. Don't worry about populating the learner reference fields. You can add notes if you'd like, but they are optional. To change the password, you'll scroll down toward the bottom of the screen, enter a new password for your learner, and you'll hit save all the way at the bottom. Remember that your learners can always go back and change their own passwords. Down here, you'll also see some other information you can add for your learners if you'd like, but all of this is optional. In order to disable an inactive or former learner, let's say someone quits or is otherwise terminated, you'll go to this screen, scroll all the way at the bottom, and then click on the red Disable This User button. You'll be prompted to confirm this action, so I'm going to hit Yes, and I get a confirmation right away. The learner's information stays in the system, but it gets archived and the learner can no longer access the platform. You can always re-enable them at a later date. And this is useful if you have someone who is taking an extended vacation or who is seasonal and only works during the summers and you don't necessarily want their information to pop up along with everyone who is a permanent or active staff member. If you've disabled an account by mistake or you'd like to re-enable them for any reason, you can do so by clicking the green Enable button. It again will ask you if you're sure, and then the account is restored back to normal. Disabled users will not show up in your regular list of staff members, but if you'd like to see your disabled users, you can scroll all the way down to this View Disabled button. If you would like to view the content and what courses look like from your manager account, go to your dashboard and then click on View Dashboard in the upper right corner. 
This will bring you to what your learners see when they log in. You can scroll down to view your courses, and when you click on one, it will take you to exactly what your users see and the last place that you left off. To go back, click the home icon in the upper left corner. To return to your administrator dashboard, you'll then hit return to management up at the top. And this brings you right back to your manager dashboard. To see reports for each piece of content, go to your dashboard and click the manage content tab on the left side menu. This will bring you to a list of all the courses in your account. Choose the course you'd like to review and hit Actions, then Report. This brings you to the main Reports Overview page. When you click on Learners, it brings you to a page where you can see each of the employees and where they are in their course progress. Here we can see Started and Completed. Each learner's report info can be expanded or collapsed using the arrows to the left of their names. In this example, you can see that John has spent 1.1 hours on the course and has completed 100% of the course. You can also see here when he last looked at the material. You can also use the Manage button to the right of their name to go back to the learner's detail page where personal information can be edited and access can be modified. In the learner's beta tab, you can see a different view of course status, last active date and time, view time, and more. You can also download the information by going to the three dots here in the upper right and clicking Download Data. In Quizzes Beta, you can see Quiz Attempts Overviews, select a specific quiz, and see the grades. To edit your own information, you'll click your name in the top right corner and hit Account. This will take you to a page where you can edit your email address, change your password, or you can edit your credit card information. You can always go back to your dashboard view by clicking your logo in the top left. Welcome to the Fetch Find family. We're really glad to have you as a subscriber and please let us know if there's anything we can do to help.